gonna talk about the goblet squat. So with the goblet squat, I'm holding the bell here, keeping elbows in, not letting them flare, flare out. Right, I squat down, push my butt back, knees out to the side, lower down as low as I can, and back up while I'm trying to stay upright and vertical as I can. So the reason to be upright and vertical as you can, that's gonna work abs in your back that much more to stay upright. Whereas you have a weight here, it tends to wanna to pull you forward. But what's nice about the kettlebell, it's almost, whereas in a body weight, you might have a more of a lean forward, but the kettlebell, I can almost kinda of use that as a counterbalance to come back. Whereas a barbell, you have, on the back, you have to lean forward right just because the way the weight weight is positioned right so this involves more abs and back and this which is nice about the, the gal squat so first thing about the squat is make sure right that our first motion is sitting back and not knees going forward right the knees were not designed to handle look to handle load right the hips were so when you squat Make sure you push back, and then from there, sit down. As far as the knees go, make sure, right, as you squat down, they're not coming in, right? And it'd be better to think of like pushing them out, right? Pushing them straight out as you go down and on the way up. What that does, right, it opens up the hips more, allows you to get lower, right? Also put those knees in a safe, safe position, right? And you're keeping tension on as far as that. It's also gonna create more torque by pushing them out and wanting to come up. As far as feet, right? We can be parallel, right? But a stronger, you know, you have, or you can be out a little slight like this, right? Going out too wide, right? Then we're going to almost like a like what's called like a PLA squat. But for the most part, about 30 degrees is, is what you need. Feet are shoulder, shoulder, shoulder width apart, right? So now with the bell, uh, if you have a cast iron, there's a few different ways you can hold it. If you have a cast iron, you can hold it like this, right? And the reason is because you have flanges that stick out this side makes it a little easier. If you have the competition bells, the steel ones, then you're gonna wanna hold either like this or what's called a crush grip. And then from here, right, I sit back, push my knees out, try and get as low as I can, and back up. Vision, you're just you're looking straight, straight ahead the whole time. And you might make out with the kettlebell a little bit, but that's all right. All right, sit back. Pushing knees out, dropping straight down, pushing through that ground on the way up. So on this, as far as the breathing goes, I'm gonna breathe in. Leak air on the way up. Now, if I'm doing lightweight, like a lot of repetitions, then I can do like an exhale down. Right, but I'm going heavy. Right, I want I want to make sure I'm body protected. Hence the breathe in before helps tense everything up and protects the joints. I breathe in, leak in air on the way up. Right, and make sure good contact with the ground. You don't want heels coming up. If your ankle mobility is poor, right? If you feel the heels coming up, then just put like a five or 10 pound plate underneath you, something of that thickness, right? Or like a, a, a one inch board. That'll work just, just as well. And you'll already squat in your in weightlifting shoes, right? What that's gonna do, increase, increase your mobility and will be able, allow you to get lower in that full range of motion. Right, so with the goblet squat, 
Make sure we're staying here, right? Trying to stay upright as possible. Pushing your hips back and knees out to the side. Drive out. <laughs> 